This tutorial is to show you how to make a simple Hello World program in Microsoft Visual Studio 2010 C++. So first, let's go and start the Microsoft Visual C++ environment. Um, What you can do if you want is you can right click on Microsoft Visual C++ 2010 Express in your uh, menuing system and then if you right click on it and you go to send to you can say desktop and that will put a, de a desktop shortcut icon for you here so that you can just start it up here easily. I'll go ahead and start Microsoft Visual C++ 2010 Express for me here. So this will take a little time, especially the first time that you run it to start up. After this, it should go fairly quickly. Now, in this screen, the first thing we want to do is we probably want to close the uh, start page. We're going to deal mostly from the menu here, so I'll click on File. Now I've discovered that doing Visual Basic 2010 Express, we may not be able to see the menu that pops up. So if you would follow along with me, first click on File, then go to New, and then select Project. Now the type of program we're going to make is always going to be Visual C++. You want to navigate down to Win32 console application. You now want to select what the name of the program is. Let's just call this Hello World. And the next thing you need to do is you need to browse. So click on browse to where you're going to put this file. For the rest of the course, I would like you to put all your files and organize them onto your C drive. You can set your computer at home up this way. And I'd like you to create a folder which consists of your first initial and last name. Now you can go ahead and set this up in advance of actually doing the Microsoft Visual C++ 2010 Express uh, using My Computer or Windows Explorer. But you can also set it up by clicking on Make a New Folder and then just typing, like in my case, jcrumb, first initial, last name. This is what I'd like you to do. Um, I'll go ahead and go into that folder. I would like you to create a folder in here which is called um, C1, so I'll click on make a new folder and I'll call this C1. Oops. Let's go ahead and browse back in there. I wasn't quite finished setting things up. In this folder, I'll create a folder which is called, let me rename that, CH01. And everything we do in the um, first chapter will go into this file folder. So let me go back to there and I'll say OK. Once we've got the path completely made to where we're going to put this program, uh, we're done. So I'll just say OK. So it'll go in the jcrumb folder, C1, Chapter 01. And for future chapters, you'll just make a new CH02 for Chapter 2 and so on. When I say O, I mean 0. I'll go ahead and click OK. I've got the name here. I've got that we're making this program Visual C++. I'm saying 132 console application. I also have the path. Everything looks really good. Let's click on OK. And I'll say Finish. Now, this brings up our code window, and the program we're going to write is on the right. On the left is the Solution Explorer, which is really 
um, a place where we can navigate around and look at some of the files which are in our project. This is a very simple project because it only has one file in it. So for every program you make in Microsoft Visual C, you're going to start off with the line pound include stdafx.h in quotes just the way you see it here. In the bloodshed environment, you won't do that. The second line is going to be pound include, just as we did in bloodshed, iostream. On the next line, I'll say using namespace std, and then I'll write a semicolon. These two lines are identical to what we did in Bloodshed. And really, the code here should be the same as the program we wrote in the Bloodshed environment. Um, unfortunately, Microsoft does require that we have this first line. It always has to be your first line of stdafx.h. Uh, case is really important here. Notice that everything I've written to here is all lowercase. If you see double slashes like this, these are comments. Um, I'm going to remove the underscore T in front of main. And within the parentheses here, I'm going to remove everything that we have here. Now, main is a function. You don't really need to understand that yet. And everything in this function must occur between these braces. Every function must have an opening and a closing brace. If it begins with the word int, it means you must return something, and what you must return is whatever the data type is that you have here. In this case, it's zero, because zero is an integer. Actually, you could change this to almost any number you wish, and it wouldn't matter. You just need to return a integer. For instance, you could write 100 here, and it would be fine, but we don't really want to do that. Now, the whole purpose of this program is to output the words, hello world. So to do that, I'm going to write cout, which stands for console out. I'll do two is less than signs, which are referred to as insertion operators. I'll then say, hello world, unquote. That's the message I'm going to display on the console screen. And then I'll have another two is less than signs. The uh, insertion operator here outputs the message, hello world. Anything in quotes is outputted literally as you have it. You can output numbers if you wish. Numbers don't have to be put within quotes. You can also declare variables. Uh, that's another type of output that we have. Um, but I'm going to keep this program very simple here. Now, after the second insertion operator, I'm going to write END. And what that means is, end of line, throw me down a line. If I didn't do that, we would have a message that says, press any key to continue, and it would be run on to the same line that says, hello, world. This particular point, that will display the message. Unfortunately, you'll never see the message because the program will end before you can see it. So I want to hold the screen open, so I need one more line of code. I'm going to write system, quote, pause, unquote, semicolon, and that should complete our program. Now, to run the program, simply go to debug, go to start debugging, and what this will do is this will build and link your program, and then run it. So I'm going to go ahead and select that tells me my project is out of date. Do I want to build it? Yes. Down below shows the progress of our building. If everything goes right, we shouldn't get any error messages. And you can see here the message, hello world. If you made any mistakes, you should get a message about it below. Um, for instance, if you forgot to put on the second pair of quotes ending the hello world statement, and I went to, say, start debugging, um, I see down below that it didn't succeed, it failed, 
says I have builders. It did run it, but it only ran it because uh, I had successfully built it from before. Let's go ahead and try that again. Let's not run it. it. Tells me there's a problem on line 11. Now, if you want to go find that line, the easiest way to do it is double click on the line where you have your first error, and you'll notice your cursor up here jumps to the line that has the error. And it gives us a message here new line in constant. Well, the message is a little screwy. If we read on to our second error on the next line, it says we're missing a semicolon before the identifier system. So it says there's something wrong before this and something wrong here. Typically, if you have an error, it may be on the same line as the first number you have here or even the line before. So look around a little bit for it. And once I know that it's approximately here, I can see, oh, I left off a set of quotes here. Once I fix that, now I can build my solution to see if it works. I can see it now does work, and then I can run the program. This concludes the first tutorial.